Okay. Um, today we're going to talk about, we're going to deal with all of this knowledge that you guys have. Um, I have a lot of black advocates that walk around, especially some of the younger ones. Um, you walk around with all this knowledge of Kemet and all these different um, books that you don't read and all this stuff that you know. And you seem to do it just to impress other people or to show how much you know. Um, and having a bunch of knowledge is great, but knowing what to do with that knowledge is what we're going to deal with. Um, having a bunch of knowledge just to be impressing each other, sitting around talking about, you know, how things used to be you know, 3,000, 6,000, 10,000 years ago, uh, that don't really do the black population, the black community, the black world any good right now. It doesn't do it very much good um, as far as building. Um, if you're going to talk about the, the pyramids and the different things that uh, black people built 30,000 years ago, yet you're not building right now, then you're not doing us much good. It's just as simple as that. Um, every time that you are talking about uh, building, you know, the different buildings that used to exist, the different uh, monuments and whatnot, while you're talking about it, white folks are digging those, those kings and queens up. They're digging up those graves. They're digging up those uh, tombs. And they're finding out all, in, all kinds of information. And you get the information 10 years later after somebody finds out that white folks has it in a basement or attic somewhere. Okay, so um, one of the things that has to happen with some of my younger people, I think it's great that you guys are, you know, finding your blackness and feeling your blackness and all that good stuff. But it's time for you to take that knowledge that you have, all of that, that uh, those uh, things of the past that you know about, all of those kings and queens, and I want you to start looking at how it is that you can actually start uh, building or rebuilding uh, some of that stuff. Now, you know that, well, many of you may know that the Nuwabian nation um, rebuilt pyramids to scale um, in North Georgia. Now, it's excellent to know the different things that, that went on uh, in the past. But one of the problems that happened with Black Wall Street, that happened with the Northern Nation in uh, Putnam, Georgia, um, is that while they look at the good stuff that, that black folks did back in the past, but if you're just looking at the good things that happened, you're going to make the same bad mistakes over again. It is part of having that knowledge is knowing what went right, but also knowing what black people did wrong. What did black people do wrong to get in this position that they're in? And what did those kings and queens, what mistakes did they make uh, when they encountered white people? Uh, what, what did they do? What did their children do? What did their kingdom, their villages, their, their tribes, what did they do? that caused uh, their kingdoms to fall, that caused their tribes to be decimated. Um, knowledge is only as good if you're willing to analyze. Remember, white folks are constantly, constantly analyzing knowledge about you because they want to eventually find out where you came from, where they know you did not come from here. Any of you that are religious, and the Bible, white folk Bible got y'all thinking that y'all came from here, from two people, or even those of you that, that appear to have a bunch of knowledge about Kemet and all this good stuff, and 
yet when I listen to y'all, I hear y'all talking about how uh, all, the, all people came from Africa and all people came from uh, the, the female giving birth to all nations. And, come on, y'all. Y'all got enough information to know that we did not start on this planet. And anything that makes you feel, or makes you believe that we started on this planet, you need to stop and go back and, and do some more study. You need to do some more research. Because your ancestors left you plenty of information to let you know that it did not start here. The pyramids themselves are built in a way to let you know that life did not start here. Now, they may have landed on in Africa, but you also need to remember that it, the world used to be one continent, one landmass. So to say that, that you know, um, they landed on one continent is not necessarily accurate unless you are going to go all the way back to Pangaea. Now, if you're going to go all the way back to Pangaea, now you're actually starting from, from the beginning, at least the beginning of here, okay? But y'all got a, all this knowledge that y'all have and everybody's just uh, saying what everybody else has said through the years and I know y'all got some, y'all idolize people, um, the different uh, crazy, actual crazy and um, Dr. Ben, those are great people. But remember, y'all need to go back. Don't just take what they gave you and just regurgitate that over and over again. What's y'all? What is y'all part? What is your next level? What is the part that you are supposed to add to that? What is the research that you're supposed to add to their research? Uh, they did their parts. Now it's time for you to do yours. And it's hard for you guys to, you're not going to get all of these young people uh, to listen to what you're saying. But there are some young people that are listening. But to them it sounds like you're, you're just uh, idolizing the past and you're not really doing anything with it. And that's not good. Okay, so um, knowledge Increase your knowledge. Yeah, I see you guys, you're stuck. It's, everybody's stuck in an era. Um, I see people that are stuck in Egypt. Uh, I see people that are stuck in the civil rights era. Uh, the older uh, black folks. I see uh, people that are stuck in the 60s. Um, people that are stuck in the 80s. You guys are stuck in these eras. But all of these different timelines, um, they go together. And you, it's time for you to start putting the pieces together. And how did you actually uh, build up your civilizations? How did you build up your nation? How did you use that knowledge to, to build buildings, to build monuments, to build uh, villages, to build whatever? You guys complain a lot about not being able to get uh, enough people to... Uh, to join with you, but when I look at it, I see hundreds of you, and the problem is, is that you guys don't talk to each other, you talk at each other, and if you guys, if, uh, the hundred of you that I see and hear on these different sites, y'all got together and actually every week worked on building, because that's what white folks do, they get together every week. And they work on the next thing to build. If you're, you know, just sitting on a social site and you're not working on building a school, building uh, a monument, building, you know, a civilization back up, pick one and build it, start building. Um, I hear you guys talk about Africa all the time, but you talk about it as if you're tourists. Um, you want to go there and just, you know, chill out. Africa is not a place where you're going to go to chill out. <laughs> there are real issues there that need to be dealt with. You need to take your knowledge that you have gotten from your years here. And you need to go back. If you're going to go there, you need to go there to build. You need to go there not to 
to run rough shot over the people and build what you want to build. But find out from the people what they need, what help do they need from you. Anytime you see black folks fighting anywhere, there's a white company, a white person uh, behind it somewhere causing that conflict. Y'all start finding out. Use your knowledge to find out who these white companies are, who these white people are that are causing these conflicts in the African nations. You cannot start rebuilding until you can start repairing some of the damage that's been done uh, from the conflicts. And that's one of the things that your, your knowledge would be very, very good at is uh, conflict resolution. And we're going to do a show on conflict resolution so that you understand uh, the steps that you need to take. Remember, white folks do not want peace anywhere on this planet. Okay, they do not want peace. They make their money off of war. If you know that, then you are going to have to be ready to encounter white folks causing conflict wherever you go. Okay, but your knowledge is a great thing, but remember white folks are digging up your people. They're digging up graves. They're digging up tombs. They're digging up uh, kings and queens from the past every single week, every single month, every single year. The further they dig down, the more of your people they're going to find. If you guys do not start paying attention to this, it's, it's not enough to just sit back and say, you know, oh, M. Hotel and, and, you know, all these different people that you guys idolize. And we're going to talk about some of the idolizations that, <laughs> that you guys have. But I see, um, you see that I, you come to a place every week and just to idolize someone. Uh, yes, you get information from certain people, but you seem to brag about, I was at Dr. So-and-so's lecture. And, you know, I've been to all of Dr. So-and-so's lectures. And, but what did you do when you left out? What did you start building? What, how did you take that knowledge that you were given? How did you take that knowledge that you got and implement it in building your community? The minute you leave a lecture from any of the different uh, educators that we have, and we have a lot of them, the minute that you leave the lecture, you should be able to go back to your community, stand in the middle of the street, or stand on the sidewalk, and see what you need to do. You roll up your sleeves and you say, okay, there are, you know, 25 houses that I need to start working on, finding out who owns them, uh, who abandoned them, uh, what, how we get them, how, what, how we turn them into community centers, how we... You need to use that knowledge to, you know, if you got, if your, the schools aren't teaching your, your black children, then you need to have after school programs that teach them what they need to know. In two or four hours after school, not only will you be helping the parent uh, of that child by ex having that extended uh, program, but You'll be having, you'll be using your knowledge to actually educate uh, black children, and that's that's what the knowledge is for. Just having it, that's that's like having a bunch of jewelry and you're not going nowhere. Nobody sees it. You're having a bunch of jewelry and just you know walking around so that people see it. <laughs> um, it doesn't really do anything. It has no real value uh, until you actually are looking at selling it or whatever. But, you know, and you guys, if y'all got all this knowledge in y'all head, write a book. There are not enough books for these children to know the stuff that you guys know. Telling them is one thing, but you're not going to get to all of them. And so, if you got all this knowledge in your head, uh, think about sitting down today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Sit down today. Take a piece of paper, fold it in half, and start writing. Even if you don't know what you're writing, even if you don't know 
you know, how it how to begin, even if you don't have a title, take that knowledge and every single one of you guys that I see uh, talking about all this different stuff from uh, the past and all these different kings and queens, I'm looking for a book, okay? <laughs> Where's your book that tells people all of this stuff that you, all this knowledge that you require? Okay, so we're going to uh, start doing a little something with our knowledge. Uh, having knowledge of the different politics and uh, I see a lot of you, I'm really happy uh, that I see a lot of you uh, becoming more self-controlled, um, getting more, gaining more control of your uh, political structure. It's and one thing for black folks to and sit around and complain about what white folks not doing uh, for the black community. But you guys aren't doing your thing as a political body either. And so <laughs> we're going to talk about how, how weak uh, the black political body has actually become. That's a crying shame. But in the meantime, Gain some knowledge about the different black uh, candidates that are out there that are running. Um, don't just wait till the day of, of voting and just pick somebody. Yeah, gain knowledge. Knowledge is the one weapon, the one piece of the tool that you have to really change your communities. Okay, so it's just that you must implement that knowledge, put it to use in a way that rebuilds and builds your community. Alright, so um, I hope um, <laughs> I start seeing some books over the next month or so. Um, there's plenty of places that let you know how to, to put a book up in less than 30 days. But um, y'all take that knowledge and start spreading. These children need the information and the knowledge that you guys have in your head. And uh, when I hear you guys just sitting around uh, what the old folks used to call them jaw jacking <laughs> about the kings and queens of the past and how you taught white folks everything. Well, if you taught white folks everything and white folks are using that to keep you where you are, uh, they don't say a whole lot for you, okay? So if you know uh, black people taught white folks everything. And black people, you should be using your knowledge uh, to get black folks back where they need to be. Okay? And you don't need to, to have a bunch of people with you to do it. It starts with you. Okay? It starts, the first thing it starts with is you taking that knowledge and putting it in a book. Alright? So, yeah, I know I'll be, I'm going to be pushing y'all uh, toward those books of the 2014, by the end of 2014, we should have a thousand books for these children uh, with all this knowledge I've got in y'all head. Okay? So, <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys with that. Y'all know how I do it. Um, if we're still here next time, we're going to deal with some things. Okay?